Fred, what have you lined up for today's D-Lab basic training? Of course, we always have that rat around. He's been playing with a transformer. But today, we have a silver face fender vibro champ. Symptom is low power output. So as I go through this amplifier, here's three things it could be. Is it a bad tube? Is it a ground problem? Or is it a power supply issue? So I'll switch over to the amplifier. I'll give you a little background history. We'll test and let's see what the problem is. All right, before we dive into the chassis, let me give you a little bit of background on this amplifier. The owner has had it a little over 30 years. He saw that I repair these amps online contacted D-Lab and said I want this thing to be recapped, retubed, make it sing again. So he really didn't specify how long this problem has existed. So the amp showed up, I opened her up, of course immediately spotted it had the original filter cap. So I changed it as well as all the other violators on the eyelet board. And actually one of the sections on the filter cap was open. Okay. So I expected that this thing would just take right off like they normally do. Well, that was a bad assumption. So I fired up the amp and after about a minute, I finally got some white noise out of the volume. I thought, wow, that sure took a long time to warm up. So at this point I have a guitar hooked up. I'm gonna put it right up around nine, okay? And this is what I get out of her. Volume at nine, guys. So there's dimed out. It produces music, but not at the volume that I'd expect. I thought, oh boy, what did I overlook? Did I miss the fact that it may have had a bad output transformer and now I have to requote? So after diving a little bit further into the amplifier, I found out what the problem is, and this is going to be quite the surprise for you guys. So if you find yourself in this situation, obviously the first thing to do before you do any maintenance on the amplifier is give it a good visual inspection. So you want to check for any loose components. Obviously look at all the grounds across the front of the eyelet board. Make sure everything is secure. And that's already taken place. So we don't have to start with that. But then the next step would be to verify your power supply voltages. Okay. So we know that I've already recapped this machine and I already checked the tubes. So that rules those out. So now it appears as though we probably have some type of a power supply issue. Remember I just replaced the filter cap. So I've got my meter on DC. So here are the voltages on the filter cap. You can see the highest voltage here coming off the rectifier tube is only 225 volts. Look at your champ schematic. That's about half of what the high voltage should be. So that may point at a bad power transformer or perhaps the 5Y3 rectifier. Inspecting the amp, the tubes are warm but I really don't see those filaments on at the proper intensity either. So that also points at the power transformer. But before we condemn it, let's check the outputs direct off of that power transformer. So now we're going to go to volts AC. I'm going to switch my leads and we're going to do a little bit of probing on the filament lines and the high voltage windings and see if there's something there that's not right. So what I've done is reposition things so you can see a little bit better. My meter is now on AC and we're going to measure the windings off of that power transformer. So here's my high voltage, about 376. To the center tap we got 188. Here's my 5 volt winding that's feeding the 5Y3 rectifier. You see I only have 2.7 volts. So let's take a look at our 6 volt AC winding. We simply go to ground. And this side of the lamp, I got 3.2 volts. So all the outputs of that power transformer are half 
of what they should be. So you'd ask yourself at this point, do I have a bad power transformer? Well, here's where the fun comes in. All right, so let's zoom in on the base of this power transformer and I'll show you guys what I discovered. First off, this is the original power transformer. It is an A010020 used in many of these Champs and the Bronco amplifier. If you look at the base of this transformer, you'll see you've got a pigtail here with some heat shrink tubing on it. That is a yellow and green with black stripe. You have a black wire for one side of your primary and there's a red wire going to the fuse holder. That's the other side of the primary. So you wonder why is there this funny little pigtail where these two wires are connected? Well, it's because this transformer could be wired for 230 or 120 volt AC use. In this case, it appears as though it's actually wired for 230 volts. Let me show you the schematic that I found online. All right, so here is the diagram that I found online, in this case for the Bronco amplifier, but it shows that same part number power transformer. If you look up here, this is called the alternate connection, and that is for 117 volts. The normal connection, according to this diagram, was for 230 volts AC primary. And in that case, you'll see that black, yellow, and green, black are tied together. That's the pigtail that you just saw in that amplifier. So it appears as though this is how it's connected. You got the black and you have the black red as the primary. What we need to do is connect it per this diagram where the black yellow and black red are connected together, black green and black are together. That takes these two primaries and actually ties them in parallel for 117 volts each. All right, so what I need to do is take off this heat shrink tubing. We're gonna separate these wires and then connect them the way they should be for 120 volt operation. And we'll retest the amp. Okay, I've finished reconfiguring the primary of the power transformer for 120 volt operation. So what we're going to do is check our high voltage windings first. So here is to center tap. You see we've got 374. That is double what we had before. Okay. Here is my 5 volt winding. 5.3 volts. Ground to the lamp. We've got 6.4 volts. So yes. That was a culprit. I bet you this amp has a lot more volume now. I've reconnected the guitar so we can do a little post maintenance check. But listen to this. Hear that? We didn't have anything even close to that before. There's no way I'm putting this thing on 10. So we were on 5. Let's see what we got. Vibro Champ is singing again. So here's the question, guys. Was it always this way? I think it was. I believe this guy bought it 30 years ago, and maybe he bought it from somebody that had been in the service, bought it overseas. That wiring had not been interrupted until I reconfigured it for 120. How cool is that? So I like it when Fred dishes out these unique problems to D-Lab. It gets me to think. It gives me good content to share with you. There's a lot more of this on the way from D-Lab Electronics Basic Training.